Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel where we dig into the deepest mysteries of our past. Today we're journeying to a sun-drenched island in the Philippines, but we're not looking for beaches, we're looking for ghosts. We've all heard the story, right? A neat linear progression, primitive ape-like ancestors, then Neanderthals, and finally us, Homo sapiens, the last humans standing. It's a clean, simple story that puts us at the very top of the evolutionary ladder. It's the story we've been told in classrooms and seen in museums for decades. But what if I told you that story is fundamentally wrong? What if our family tree isn't a straight trunk, but a tangled, sprawling bush with branches we're only just beginning to discover? Picture this. It's 50,000 years ago. Our direct ancestors, Homo sapiens, are spreading across the globe. In Europe, Neanderthals are still thriving. On the island of Flores in Indonesia, the tiny Homo floresiensis, often called hobbits, are hunting pygmy elephants. And on another island, a world away, a completely different, mysterious type of human is living a life we can barely imagine. This isn't a sci-fi plot, this is real. This is the story of Homo Luzonensis. Our journey begins in Kalau Cave, a vast, beautiful network of caverns on the island of Luzon in the Philippines. For centuries, this cave has been a place of local legend and natural wonder. But in 2007, it became the epicenter of one of the most groundbreaking discoveries in modern anthropology. A team of archaeologists, led by Armand Salvador Mahares, was meticulously excavating the cave floor layer by layer, going back in time with every inch they dug. Deep within the sediment, they found something small, something easily missed, a single foot bone, a metatarsal. At first, it might not seem like much, but this bone was old, very old. Dating suggested it was around 67,000 years old, and more importantly, it didn't look quite like a modern human bone. It was small and its features were strange. It was a breadcrumb, a tiny clue that hinted at a much larger story. The team knew they had stumbled onto something significant, but they needed more evidence. And for that, they had to keep digging. For years, the team returned to Kalau Cave, patiently sifting through the earth. Then, in subsequent excavations, their patience paid off. They unearthed more treasures, two hand bones, two more foot bones, and several teeth, including premolars and molars. These remains belonged to at least three different individuals, two adults and a child. Now, they had a collection. They had enough pieces to start assembling the puzzle of who these ancient inhabitants were. And the picture that emerged was bizarre. The teeth were a strange mosaic of features. The molars were small and simple, much like our own but the premolars had robust, complex roots, a trait seen in much more ancient human ancestors like Australopithecus, who lived millions of years earlier in Africa. It was like looking at a creature that was simultaneously primitive and modern, a living paradox. But the real shocker came from the hand and foot bones. The finger and toe bones, the phalanges, were distinctly curved. This is a feature we typically see in tree-climbing primates. And in very early human ancestors like the famous Lucy, Australopithecus afarensis, who lived over three million years ago. This wasn't T a trait you D expect to find in a human species living just 50,000 years ago. At the same time, our own ancestors were creating sophisticated art and tools. The curvature strongly suggested that these individuals spent a good portion of their time climbing, perhaps navigating a dense forest canopy, or scaling the rocky cliffs around their cave home. This was not Homo sapiens. This was not a Neanderthal. This was something entirely new. The evidence was undeniable. After years of painstaking analysis and debate, in 2019, the scientific community officially welcomed a new member to the human family. They were named Homo Luzonensis, after the island where their long-lost story was finally rediscovered. The announcement sent shockwaves through the world of paleoanthropology. Why? Because Homo Luzonensis 
completely shatters our simplified timeline of human evolution. It proves that, as recently as 50,000 years ago, the world was a far more diverse place than we ever imagined. It wasn't just us and the Neanderthals. Our planet was home to a variety of human species, each adapted to its own unique environment. Think about what this means. While our ancestors were painting masterpieces in European caves, another human species, small in stature, likely standing under four feet tall, was thriving in a tropical island environment on the other side of the world. They were a ghost species, living and breathing alongside us, completely unknown until now. This discovery raises so many tantalizing questions. First and foremost, how did they even get to Luzon? This is one of the biggest mysteries. The island of Luzon has, for millions of years, been separated from the mainland by deep ocean channels. It has never been connected by a land bridge, even during ice ages when sea levels were at their lowest. This means that to get there, the ancestors of Homo Luzonensis must have accomplished an incredible feat. They had to cross the open sea. Did they build rafts? Did they cling to floating debris washed out to sea by a storm? We don't know. Whatever the method, it wasn't a planned migration. It was likely a stroke of luck, a chance event that led to a small population becoming marooned on this isolated island. Once there, they were cut off from the rest of the world. And over hundreds of thousands of years, they evolved in complete isolation, a process known as insular dwarfism and endemic evolution. This isolation is likely what led to their unique mix of features, their small size, their modern-looking teeth, and their primitive curved fingers and toes. They were a product of their island world, a unique evolutionary experiment. So what was their life like? We don't have any stone tools that can be definitively linked to Homo luzonensis yet, but the presence of butchered animal bones, like those of a rhinoceros, in the same cave layers, suggests they were skilled hunters and tool users. They were intelligent beings, capable of surviving and thriving in a challenging environment. They weren't just less evolved versions of us. They were a different, successful branch of humanity, Imagine sharing your world with other human species. Imagine walking through a forest and knowing that the beings in the trees weren't just monkeys, but another kind of person. It's a concept that feels like it belongs in a fantasy novel, but for almost the entirety of our species' history, it was reality. We weren't alone. The idea that Homo sapiens was always destined to be the sole survivor is a myth an illusion created by our current solitude. The story of Homo luzonensis doesn't end with their discovery. It also ends in mystery. What happened to them? We don't know for sure. The most recent remains we have are dated to around 50,000 years ago. It's possible they were ultimately driven to extinction by environmental changes, or perhaps they met the same fate as many other ancient species when Homo sapiens arrived. Our species began to expand into Southeast Asia around that time, and history has shown us that we have not always been peaceful cohabitants. It's a sobering thought that our own arrival might have spelled the end for this unique chapter of human diversity. The handful of bones and teeth from Kalau Cave have rewritten our family history. They prove that our past is not a straight line, but a complex tangled tree with many branches, some of which we are only just beginning to find. Homo luzonensis is a profound reminder that what we know is just a fraction of what there is to discover. For tens of thousands of years, their story was lost, buried in the dark, silent earth of a cave. Now, their whispers are finally being heard. And this forces us to ask one profound question. Who else is out there waiting to be found? The islands of Southeast Asia, with their long history of isolation, are prime candidates for more incredible discoveries. What other lost chapters of the human story are still buried right beneath our feet, hidden in caves or riverbeds, waiting for the right person to come along and piece their story back together? The age of discovery in human origins is far from over. In fact, it might just be getting started. What do you think? 
What could have led to the unique evolution of Homo luzonensis? And where else in the world might we find another lost human species? Share your theories and ideas in the comments below. I'd love to read what you think. Thank you so much for joining me on this incredible journey back in time. If you enjoyed uncovering the secrets of our forgotten past, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more deep dives into the mysteries of history. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you won't miss our next adventure. Thanks for watching and see you next time.